energy efficient projects to customers to help them bring down their energy usage and therefore decreasing a customer's energy bill and load on the energy grid. All worthy. Uh, Elaine is a Navy brat, traveling around the world as a child with her family until they settled in San Diego. <laughs> she holds a master's degree in computer science and she's worked with S at SDG&E since 2014 in their customer programs. And then Natasha, Natasha, um, is SDG&E's electric vehicle customer engagement manager, which is a long title. You'll probably want to abbreviate that in the future. Um, we love acronyms at SDG&E. <laughs> uh, and uh, Natasha is focused on generating awareness about the benefits of driving electric. Natasha's team manages all the marketing and education efforts for SDG&E's clean transportation programs and specializes in stakeholder engagement and customer outreach. Natasha is a San Diego native, woohoo, and holds a BS in marketing communications from SDSU, as well as a master's in project management from the University of Wisconsin. And she has worked at SDG&E since 2009. So we have some power hitters today and we are very excited to have you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I will attempt to share my screen here. And hopefully, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Great. All right. Well, hi, thanks for having us. It's really great to, um, to come and talk to you. I have, um, I have been a member of Rotary, and so I have a special place in my heart for service organizations such as yours. So I was very excited to be able to come and speak to you today, especially about my job. Um, I've, so I consider myself a San Diego native because my family has been here since the 70s, um, and I, I consider that a very long time. Um, I'm, I'm the baby of the family, so even though um, I'm a Navy brat, I got less of it than my, my siblings. Did. <laughs> they got a lot more of the moving around. Um, so just a little bit about uh, customer programs. Customer programs is a, um, a group that handles all of the energy efficiency for SDG&E. We are heavily regulated by the CPUC and we have uh, lots, of, lots of red tape and jump, hoops to jump through. However, I will say that I'm very happy to be in this side of the business. Um, I love working with our customers and helping them to become more energy efficient. And, and it, is a, it is a strong emphasis that scg &E has, as you'll hear with what my presentation is, and then also with Natasha's over the EV program. So, so a little bit about um, what we're doing. We focus on both residential and all non-residential customers. My conversation today is going to be focused towards our residential program offerings that we have, just so you see some of those, but we also have a wide breadth of um, offerings for commercial customers, industrial, agricultural, public customers, everybody out there. So let me make sure that my screen is working. So first of all, I'm going to go into some of our, president, our residential program offerings, and the majority of our residential offerings come in three forms. The first of them is what we call our plug load appliance program. All it basically means is these are the programs where you can get rebates on appliances that are more energy efficient for your home. So the first of them are, and I'm going to run through a couple of what these are. The first of them are, of course, clothes washers. We offer only a $25 rebate on our, our clothes washer. That's a small one. We also have this little device as a pool pump. <laughs> pool pumps are great. Pool pumps, we offer, about, we offer a $200 rebate on pool pumps. So if you're interested in upgrading your pool pump to a more energy efficient one, we have a good rebate for that one. We also do the smart communicating thermostats. So the thermostats in your home that you know you can set, you can program those um, smart communic th communicating thermostats. We are currently offering a $75 rebate on. Those are going to go away by the end of this year, though, because those are not going to be able to be rebated anymore. So if you are interested or thinking about going to something like a Nest, and I have a couple of other examples a little bit later on, where it's a energy efficiency controlling device for you. Do it before the end of this year because there's some good rebates for you. Um, we also have, this is an electric water heater rebate. We've, we get $500 back on electric water rebates if you purchase a new electric water rebate for your home. And we also have gas water heaters. So if you do a gas, it's only about $100 to $150. It depends on 
the energy efficiency rating of the gas device, but for gas water heaters, we offer $100 to $150. Now, along with all of those in our plug load appliance program, we also offer, if you sign up for demand response programs for any of the smart thermostats, we also, also offer additional rebates on top of the $75. So we will give you a $75 rebate. And then if you do apply for to be on one of the demand response programs, it's called the AC Saver Thermostat Program. We give anywhere from 50 to $70. Um, Basically, you opt in, it helps you with the adjustments, they monitor it um, remotely and they make suggestions to you, they help with the adjustments of your devices. And if there's any conservation that's needed between the hours of noon to nine, they will adjust your thermostat for those time periods, that's called demand response. So there's extra load on the grid, on the electric grid. If you sign up for this program, when there's extra, extra load on the grid, they will go and they will adjust your device to not pull so much electricity from the grid, but they will do it for no more than four hours. Um, so you do, once you do that, you do get additional rebates on top if you do sign up for demand response with the smart thermostat. So that's kind of a nice little extra incentive. Um, it's very close to the full value of the smart thermostats once you combine the two. So it's a, it's a great deal. A couple of other residential program offerings that we have. One is for new construction. So if you're building a new house, a single family house, um, even a multifamily house, we um, look at a whole building approach to that and, and try to get that building at least 10% above Title 24 code which is a, a code measurement on energy efficiency. If you are above 10% above that Title 24 or more, we give you a rebate for your newly built house. Um, it's, it can be a very substantial rebate. It is based on how much energy savings you are having above Title 24. Um, so it can be a very nice incentive back for the money that you're putting out for building a new house or multifamily um, building. That's one program. That program doesn't be, um, begin until April 1st of 2021, but it will be available. Now, the last program that we offer is for multifamily buildings, <clears throat> excuse me, or manufactured home communities. And it's, we have a program called Residential Zero Net Energy Transformation. It begins on January 1st of 20, oh, 2021, not 2020, excuse me, 2021. Um, and it's a turnkey approach. It looks at the whole building, all of your common areas, if you're multifamily and or a mobile uh, manufactured commu home community. And it tries to bring this whole community and transform them down to zero net energy. Um, it's, it's a really comprehensive program. You can do as little as much as, as you want. Um, and again, that program starts January 1st, 2021. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but that is the end of all of our residential program offerings at San Diego Gas and Electric. Anybody has any questions? I can take them now before I turn it over to Natasha. I have a question. Sure. First of all, a comment. I was also the youngest of four, so I got all the great duty stations too. Yes, um, great. <laughs> and my sisters really don't like me for that. Um, oh. <laughs> Because <laughs> they got Kingsville, Texas, and I got, uh, you know, London. Yeah, but, there you um, go. <laughs> <laughs> does the 10% does the reduction for the new construction, do that, does that extend to ADUs if you want to build an ADU on your property? Yes, it, it takes the whole, well, okay, so if you already have an existing property and you want to add you, you need to go through a different program for that, right? It, okay. This is only if you're building from scratch up. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately. No problem. Sure. Good question, though. Any other questions? Carl has a question. Carl? Yeah. Do you have anything for um, replacing windows? So, you know, so, you know single pane with yeah. um, triple pane? We don't. You know, we used to have those a couple of years back, um, but we've not been able to, the CPC has stopped stopped that offering. So we've not been able to offer those, unfortunately. 
yeah. We do, what's interesting is we do for non-commercial buildings, non, non-residential non buildings, I should say, not non-commercial, non-residential buildings. We do have a window film for non-residential that we can offer, where you can put a window film on your windows for those non-residential buildings, but not for residential, unfortunately. Great question though, thanks. I have a question. Sure. Uh, are you gonna, have you already addressed time of use billing or is that gonna come up in the next? segment. I'm wondering how many people have adopted that. Um, so we are not going to address it. And I don't, I don't know, then, Natasha, if you have those numbers, because I know your focus is electric vehicles. Yeah, no, I don't have the overall TOU rate numbers. I will be talking about specific EV TOU rates that we offer, but I don't have the overall just generic TOU rate. Um, okay. Yeah, unfortunately, sorry. Uh, I have a question. Sure. You back up to the first uh, explanation you gave, just to remind me what it was. Uh, let's see if I can find it for you real quick. Well, or just tell me what it was. Um, are you, uh, um, you mean these items? No, the very first one you back. This one? Yeah. What is the $25 gadget there? This is for if you purchase a new energy efficiency clothes washer and you can apply uh, for a $25 rebate for it. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure, no problem. No problem. It looks like Gary Trishman, do you have a question? You have to unmute yourself, Gary. You know, it's always tough. Um, commercial. Uh, is the are there electric water heater rebates in commercial also there is there water there's water he heater rebates in commercial for both electric and gas correct excellent thank you sure all right okay Let's give well, a round of applause for our speaker thank you <laughs> all right i will gladly turn it over to natasha who i know is going to tell you about our exciting ev world which we have a lot going on there so Natasha, take it away. Thanks, Elaine. I'm gonna also attempt to share my screen. And I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. All right, can you all see that? We can. All right, perfect. So thank you again for having me. My name is Natasha Contreras. I work for sdg &E's Clean Transportation Group. And our team is fairly, probably one of the newest at sdg &E, similar to the EE group. Um, we have been in place and growing since for about nine years so far. Um, obviously electric vehicles are really new technology. So we're constantly adapting to the changes that are out there in the environment. But the reason we're really in this business and a lot of people always ask me, why is sdg &E even promoting electric vehicles? What's in it for you? Um, obviously, I think it's a no brainer. Electric vehicles, zero emission vehicles are good for the environment. There's a lot of state mandates that are coming down the pipeline. The governor just recently announced um, that he wants to make sure that there's no more gas fueled vehicles on um, new sales by 2035. And so what does that leave us with, right? There's a lot of new technology out there. I'm sure there's gonna be new, even newer things that come on, on the market in the next uh, 15 years, but electric vehicles are kind of paving the way for the zero emission vehicles that are out there. And the reason that SEG really supports it is not only because um, sustainability is a huge pillar for us, but um, because in order to get those vehicles out on the road, we really have to work with a lot of the private companies out there to put the chargers out in our service territory. It obviously takes electricity to fuel those electric vehicles and what better source um, than the utility company to make sure that it's all installed according to standards, the most efficient way, um, renewable energy. So that is kind of the main reason why we're in this industry. My job in particular, I am in the business of myth busting. So a lot of it is education for our customers. 
So today I'm going to tell you about um, what SDG is doing to install more chargers in our service territory because there's kind of three main barriers that we constantly hear about why people don't want to make the switch to electric. Obviously, change is scary. Um, there's, you know, it's unfamiliar. We're used to our routines, um, but a lot of it is just, you know, prior to COVID, my team would be out there constantly doing community events and really just showing folks how easy it is to make the switch and the benefits that come along with it. So talking about the charging infrastructure that's available out there that SEG needs has and is constantly putting out there, I'm going to talk about some of the EV incentives that are available to bring down the cost of the brand new vehicles. And then I'm also going to talk about the special pricing plans for EV drivers. So those PVT or U rates that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so let's talk about chargers for a while. I, I, a common myth that I hear all the time um, from folks is range anxiety. If you're not familiar with the term, it's essentially the fear of unknown. Okay, so you know that if, if you're driving a gas car, if you start getting that gas light on, there's gas stations everywhere, you can easily pull over and fuel up as needed. So how does that work with electric vehicles? So the good news is, as of today, there's about 45 models available out on the market, and they no longer look like little alien cars. They're, a lot of them don't even look like electric vehicles, they look like just any regular car. Obviously, Tesla's paving the way, and we're seeing more and more of them out on the streets, but almost every uh, manufacturer out on the market is now producing either uh, plug-in hybrid or full, full battery electric vehicles. The technology, as I said, is also just um, improving constantly. So some of the newest models that are coming on the market for full battery electric vehicles have a range on a full battery that is over 300 miles. So if we do the math, and you have a full battery, um, even if you don't have a charger at home, you're using one of the public chargers that are available all over all of our service territory. It depends on how much you drive, probably in the world of COVID, you're not driving that much, but even when things start going slowly, going back to normal, we uh, have done some studies and we see that on average in our service territory, the average commute is less than 20 miles um, to those that, that are going to work. Um, the good news about charging vehicles, if you do have the luxury of having your own private garage, for example, and installing a charger, um, you're able to wake up to a full tank, essentially, every day. Um, but for those of you that are either live in a multi-unit uh, dwelling, like a condo or an apartment complex, or there's just no real estate to install a charger at your home, the good news is that there's plenty of other options um, around you to fuel up that vehicle. So SDG has several programs that have uh, been approved by the CPUC um, for us to actually put out additional chargers um, that you see out on the market. So our first flagship pilot was Power Your Drive. And in that program, we have installed over 3,000 chargers at multi-unit dwellings, which are essentially apartment and condo complexes and workplaces. Those are typically the two main places where folks charge. So you're either charging while you sleep at home or you get to work and you want to charge up your car during the workday, uh, which is a really convenient option for those employers that actually provide that amenity to their employees. Um, so you're constantly guaranteed that you won't have to worry about range anxiety because you um, charge up when you get to work, you charge up when you get to home. And then there's also public chargers. So with this pilot, we actually wrapped it up last year. And like I mentioned, we installed a total of 3,040 chargers at 254 private locations. Now I do say that they're private. They're not available for anyone to just pull up and fuel up because we worked with specific site hosts um, to install those chargers as an amenity to either the employees that work at those workplaces or to the residents that live at the complexes. Um, the benefits of this program are that, um, you know, disadvantaged communities are a huge priority. We want to make sure that we don't leave that market out um, in 
as we're continuing to grow in this new industry. So 33% of the installations were conducted in what we call disadvantaged communities. And that is not necessarily by a socioeconomic status. That is determined by what we call a Cal Enviro screen and is focused on the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that pass through that area. So for example, areas around downtown and Barrio Logan, there's a lot of nice places around there that's not necessarily low income communities, but however, because there's uh, a lot of the freight trucks that come in through the ports, um, there's excessive greenhouse gas emissions. So we focus on those areas to make sure we do all that we can to bring uh, to clean up the air in those areas. Um, for those installations, we actually charge no cost to the site host at all. And um, for those outside of the disadvantaged community, the remaining 67%, there was a really small nominal fee that they paid to participate in this program. Other benefit is that with this program, we install, own, operate, maintain, and bill for all the infrastructure and for the um, maintenance use um, at no cost to the customer. So. Um, it, let's just say we are talking about a workplace where we installed, an employee comes in, plugs in, and uh, they either, there's actually two options. Some of the employees actually uh, pick up the cost for their employees, which is a really nice perk. And for those that perhaps chose the other option just to provide the infrastructure to their employees, but maybe not pick up those costs, the employees themselves receive a monthly bill, uh, just like another sdg bill for all the charging that they consumed over the month. Um, with this pilot, we also develop a uh, very a brand new dynamic rate, hourly rate, which encourages charging at the cheapest off-peak time. So we uh, monitor the ISO, and um, obviously there's different events that happen all the time that may bring up the cost. So those that are participating in the program have the benefit to actually uh, choose what they want to pay for their consumption. So if it's a really hot day, the prices are probably going to be higher so they can opt out and not charge uh, or set a threshold of the most that they want to pay for their kilowatt hour consumption. Um, and, th and then obviously there's the environmental benefit, right? So 78% of the energy delivered through uh, our Power You Drive program comes from renewable resources, which is a great perk for everyone. So that's our first big program that was kind of us getting our feet wet, um, figuring out, scanning up processes to provide those chargers out there. And then from there, we really hit the ground running. So since Power Your Drive, we got approval for um, six other pilots to really um, test out different areas outside of just workplaces and um, complexes. So with these different, uh, with the six different pilots, we did different projects. One of them was actually um, our first array into public charging. So we just finished that up this year and we installed 88 new chargers at four different park and ride lots all over our territory. So the locations are in Chula Vista, National City, El Cajon and Oceanside. And like I said, with those, there's two, what we call a DC fast charger. And that is the fastest charger that's available for EV vehicles out on the road today. You could essentially get a full battery charge in about 30 minutes. Um, if you're using one of those or a standard level two charger, um, which is a 480 volt. And so those are available to anyone and everyone who pulls up to those chargers at any of those locations. Um, and those are live now. Um, that being said, we are continuing to grow the charging that's available out in our service territory. So we recently got approval for two other programs, Power Your Drive for Schools, which we are in the process of implementing now. So we're going to be, we're shooting to install about 30, um, at 30 different schools, a total of about 184 chargers that will be available to those schools, uh, which include K through 12 and higher education sites, including private colleges. So a really great benefit. And those were really working with the site host. So schools that have already enrolled to participate in the program have the option to either make those charges available to just their teachers and students, for example, or they also have an option to open those sites up for public consumption after hours. So a really um, another option to get the charges out there. And then we're really excited about our um, Power You Drive or Parks and Beaches program because that um, is another um, program to install public charging. So we are going to be installing at 12 state parks and beaches in the next two years, as well as 10 city and county parks. And all those chargers will be public, similar to our um, park and ride locations. 
Um, I know that this presentation is focused on residential services, but I do have to say that one of our biggest programs that's in motion right now is our Power You Drive for Fleets program, which is um, focused on charging infrastructure for medium and heavy duty electric vehicles. So our goal is to provide infrastructure to support, to support over 3,000 new EVs, class two through eight, at over 300 customer sites. Uh, we just launched this program in September of this year. Um, we're building program interest and obviously um, with the residential goals that are set for our state, the commercial goals are even stricter. So there's actually mandates that by a certain year, fleets do have to be converted to zero emissions. So those that are ready to get a jump start and able to participate in this program will really save a lot of money with not having to pay for the chargers at their sites out of pocket. Um, I will say that the nice benefit is it's kind of early adopters. Early bird does get the worm because, you know, as the mandates get closer, some of those incentives tend to run out. So those um, companies and organizations that are able to make the switch sooner do get to benefit from a lot of the vehicle grants that are available, available out there. So we work closely with um, organizations like the Air Pollution Control District as they tend to give out a lot of the vehicle grants. And then we couple that up with actual infrastructure programs that SEG &E provides to make sure that those go hand in hand. We give you the chargers, um, you get the vehicle grants, and it's, it's kind of a no-brainer for those organizations, like I said, that are ready to convert the fleet. So those are the infrastructure programs that we're in the process of developing and we're constantly brainstorming and pitching new ideas to the CPUC. A lot of them get shot down, but some of them do get approved. Um, and it's kind of, like I said, a changing market. So we're working really closely with our regional state partners. We're working with the city, the county, SANDAG, um, as they design new sites, as they put out infrastructure, we wanna make sure that we are complementary to each other's efforts and make sure that the charging infrastructure is installed in locations that kind of benefit everyone holistically. So those are the infrastructure programs. And I do wanna talk about um, EV, residential EV incentives. So for anyone on this call who is interested in purchasing an EV, yourself, um, there is still a lot of incentives that are available for you. Probably the two most common ones that you may have heard of is the tax, the federal tax credit, which ranges in size from 2,500 to 7,500. Um, it is an annual credit. So if you buy an EV this year, you'll get the benefit of having the tax savings in 2021. There's a lot of tax credits still available out there and the range is because it depends on the battery size. So if you buy a plug-in EV, um, which is an option that has a plug-in um, smaller electric range, as well as kind of the backup of still being able to rely on the gas side. Um, that incentive is going to be a little bit smaller than a full battery electric vehicle, such as a Chevy Bolt, for example, that typically gets a maximum price. Um, then there's also the clean vehicle rebate. Um, often called a CVRP, and that is a state rebate. So after you do purchase your EV, you submit an application to, um, to apply for this, and you typically get a check in the mail uh, within the next couple of months. So that, again, ranges in size from about 1,000 to 4,500. Um, and again, it, the amount itself is based on the battery size. So the fuller, full battery electric vehicles do get the bigger prize. And then the low income applicants are also eligible for the higher incentives. There's also the clean fuel reward, which is really excited because it actually just launched today. And the bottom three um, incentives that I'm describing now, I'm, we're all very proud because NCG need directly contributes to making these incentives happen. So for clean fuel reward, that is actually a point of sale reward of what, um, available to all California residents. So whether you live in San Diego, Orange County, San Francisco, um, you are eligible for to take advantage of this. And this is actually point of sale reward. So there's a website that is available and um, new dealerships are constantly enrolling and participating in this program. So if you are in the market or will be considering a purchase of an EV in the next couple of years, highly encourage you to visit the cleanfuelreward.com. Um, You're able to look up which dealerships near you are participating and depending on the type of vehicle that you're interested in, again, it's up to 1500. So the amount does vary again, full battery electric will get the higher incentive amount. 
um, but you essentially log onto the website, see which dealership is participating. And the nice thing about this one is that there's really no work for you. The dealership takes care of it. It's just taken off of the MSRP prices. They'll circle it for you. You'll, you'll know exactly what you're getting. And there's no paperwork to do afterwards on the back end for you. So pretty convenient, another, another way to save. And um, a lot of these can be stacked. So essentially, you're, if you're eligible, you're able to take advantage of almost all of these. The limited EV purchase credit is a very limited EV uh, credit that SDG has been um, has been um, implementing for the last couple of months. This is really a gap program in the past couple of years. Um, I don't know if anybody on this call drives an EV, but for the past couple of years, SDG would give out a credit called the Electric Vehicle Climate Credit. Um, that was man uh, that was regulated by the CPUC. The funds that were used to give out that credit have now been put forward to be able to supply the clean fuel reward, the previous one that I just talked about. And so that credit went away. But in the meantime, before the clean fuel reward launch, we wanted to do a small gap credit. So if you did purchase an EV um, since March 1st of last year, you're eligible to take advantage of this one. It technically closes at the end of this month. So you have a couple of weeks to submit that application. I didn't put a price in there because uh, the price will depend on how many people actually apply. So there's a pool of money that's available. The amount of people that actually apply for it basically gets divided equally between all the applicants. So I don't have an exact amount to tell you, but it'll probably be a couple hundred bucks. So definitely no, uh, nothing to pass by. And then last but not least, the Champions for Clean uh, Air EV Incentive. This is an scg &E incentive uh, for teachers and first responders in our service territory. So if you are one, if you know of one um, that is in the market to buy an EV, definitely point them to the scg &E website because they qualify for an additional $1,000 uh, um, on top of all the other incentives that are available on the market. Okay, and then last but not least, I wanted to talk about our SDG &E, uh, um, EV residential rates. And obviously there's a lot of options for you. Somebody just brought up the TOU conversion. So the concept is very similar, but I do like to describe these as an extra benefit or a perk for our customers because you're only eligible for these rates if you drive an EV because they do tend to be significantly lower than our regular TOU rates. So I try to break it down for you because once I start talking kilowatt hours, amperage, wattage, people tend to glaze over and lose me. Uh, I'm one of those people myself. I'm not an engineer by any, by any means. So I worked with some to break it down into layman's terms. So on average, an EV will travel approximately three miles per kilowatt hour of energy. So if you're driving a thousand miles per month, you will consume approximately 333 kilowatt hours. So the average residential sdg &E customer uses approximately 500 kilowatt hours per month. So we have two rates that are available to our customers who drive EVs. There's EVTOU2 and EVTOU5. Very similar rates. Both are whole household rates. The biggest difference is for EVTOU2, um, there's no monthly charge and the lowest rate is 19 cents per kilowatt hour during our super off-peak energy pricing. So if you're familiar with TOU rates, there's essentially three tiers that go around the clock. There's uh, off-peak, super off-peak, and then on-peak. So obviously um, in the middle of the night is our super off-peak hours. They uh, range from midnight to about 6 a.m. And that is the cheapest time to charge um, because you know, businesses are typically not operating. There's not a lot of consumption, so you're not competing with other resources. EVTOU5 does have a $16 monthly charge. However, the super off-peak rate is significantly lower. It's probably one of our lowest at about eight and a half cents to nine cents per kilowatt hour. And that is a whole house rate. So you do get to take advantage of that for everything else that you're operating. So if you're able to um, do your laundry at, later at night or run your dishwasher overnight, you are able to take advantage of that super low rate um, by being on EVTOU5. So there's obviously more information that's available on our website, um, but I like to give it an example because a lot of people kind of 
get confused and what how does that compare to actual gas prices what i would pay for gas typically how does that compare to my to what i would now be paying for electricity so the easiest way that i could describe it is let's just say to charge a 60 kilowatt hour battery full from empty on EVTOU5 during super off peak the cost would be uh, $6.30 and that'll get you to travel about 180 miles so it breaks down to being about three and a half cents per mile so if you compare that to a gas car when you're driving a 25 mile per gallon gas car um, and paying about three dollars 25 cents per gallon which is kind of the average right now obviously prices go all over the place but um, it'll cost you um, about 14 cents per mile so the comparison of 14 cents per mile versus three and a half cent per mile you know the benefits are definitely there so the, that's you know rates can be complicated but there's definitely a benefit of driving electric so that was my last slide i see some comments coming in so let me open up my comments section so i could take a look at those but does anyone have a question for me my chat natasha really great information thank you thank i have you. a uh, or my wife rather is driving a tesla and we do the super peak rate whole house and literally our electric bill is exactly the same as it has been classically i love so it it was, just, it was a lift and shift and we haven't you know Paid yeah, for gas I mean, in two years. I hear that so much. And before we, before COVID, my group, um, our bread and butter was doing ride and drive events because once you start, once you get people's butts in cars, first of all, they're really fun to drive. They're fast, they're smooth. Um, but you know, the change is really not that scary. I mean, I've had to answer questions literally to um, people would ask me, and it, and it's. For those that don't know, it's not necessarily common sense. Um, people, I get asked all the time, what about if it's raining? Can I plug in or will I get electrocuted? And so, you know, it's not a dumb question. I, you're still dealing with electricity. Obviously, they're all safe um, and there's a lot of options out there. But yeah, a lot of it is just once people start researching and doing their homework and that's where we come in, we're there to help and answer any questions we can, show you the different options available. It's it's really mm -hmm. kind of a no brainer. And I, and I do presume that by 2035 and beyond, it's going to be, you know, we're changing the way that people travel, right? So I'm going to be telling my grandkids that, you know, when I was your age, I had to actually pull over and put gas in my car. So, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Great information. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for all of that. Any, any other questions out there? All right. So I'm reading the chat here. So Arena like, has a hand raised. Yeah. Yeah. So we can, um, let, let me go ahead and get through uh, these chat questions. So Judith asks, what happens if you buy used EV? Are there any types of rebates or tax credits? So unfortunately, there's um, not so many tax credits for used EVs. The market is starting to proliferate. Typically, for if you qualify for some of the lower income brackets, you can take advantage of, um, like the beneficial state bank has some incentives for used EVs. But uh, a lot of them are focused on getting new EVs out there. So there's limited options for used EVs. Um, Judy, uh, oh, it looks like that's from you, Mike. So Judy, we bought a used Tesla and I wondered the same thing. The official answer was no. We did however qualify for the SDG program for electric car rate programs and rebates. Perfect, love it. Your money spokesperson, Mike. <laughs> there we go. I think Karina has to jump. Do you have a question, Karina? Or no, I was just giving her a round of applause. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, <laughs> Natasha. Thank you. Thanks for Great having info. me. For sure. And thank you, Elaine. Yes, thanks so much. All no right. Problem. Thanks for having and, us. And you can feel free to uh, stick around or feel free to drop off. Uh, we're just going to be getting into a little bit of our Kiwanis business. Okay. But again, thank you so much for your time. Excellent program. Yeah. And we really thank you for coming here today. Thanks. Have yeah, a great and day. I'll pass everybody. on my uh, contact information to Karina. So if anybody, you know, has a question that comes up after this presentation, feel free to email me. I could talk about this stuff all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you. Have a wonderful you. day. You too. Bye everyone. All right.
So I know our members are wondering how the leaderboard is looking. Um, and currently we have some perfect attendance for uh, Prez Boland's year. We have Monica Ball, Susan Day, Doug Frost, Judy Leitner, Sean McArdle, Steve Morris, and Heather Robinson have attended all of our luncheons for our 2020 2021 year. So all of them are in our lead. They have gold stars, so we can commend them. But again, the the race is still fresh, so we have a lot of uh, room to grow. So if you want to know what our upcoming luncheons are on December 1st, uh, we're going to meet at 12 again, and we're going to have San Diego Food Alliance. Steve uh, has brought us a great program, so be sure to join us on December 1st. Then on the 15th, we have our good friend, Andy Carey. He always has an amazing program, very familiar for, with our club and Kiwanis and specifically with Carl and Steve. Uh, so we look forward to having Andy on the 15th. Be sure to join us. Our social board, um, unfortunately our social that we were supposed to have this month got rescheduled due to some scheduling conflicts with the distillery. So Tom Bauer is still our number one leader with perfect attendance for both of the socials that we've had so far this year. But there are some upcoming socials. Again, this is from our last social last month um, at Kaiserhof, our annual Oktoberfest luncheon. And we have um, the Scripps Ranch Kiwanis is actually doing a magic show. So if you want to help support the new Scripps Ranch, um, it's $20 per household and it's going to be on Friday, November 20th. The, the You and Yours Distilling Co. Spirit Tasting is now going to be on Friday, December 4th. And the last day to register for that is November 27th. And you can either pick up your box at the uh, Distilling Co. downtown, or I can hand deliver it to you, but be sure to register by the 27th. And thank you to everyone who uh, was so flexible in rearranging the date. Uh, we look forward to having you and yours on the 27th. And then the last uh, virtual social that we're going to have again is that December 10th Voices of Our City um, and we're going to be registering through their website so that they can get their $20 donation. That's what they ask for attendance. And I'm going to put all of the links to the upcoming events in the chat right now. So everyone can easily have that. But again, they are all listed on our website. Okay, so with that being said, our member of the month up to today, uh, not including this luncheon, is again, we have a tie. And who is the tied with? Steve Morris and Doug Frost. However, Doug Frost has not been registering for the Kiwanis mm -hmm. luncheons on Wild Apricot. So we are actually not going to count his last registration, nor today. So this is just a friendly reminder. If you do plan on coming to the luncheons, you need to register. So our winner actually oh. is Steve Morris. Congratulations, uh. Steve. You are our current leader and you're looking good with all of your registrations for all of the upcoming events. So uh, Steve might be nice. our member of the year. I'm saying it here. He's got some, let's get some even competition with going with our other members. Even with this 0.5 reduction for attending two meetings simultaneously, he still leads. That is awesome. Yeah. I've prepared a few words, but I'll save them for the end of the year when I win the <laughs> whole thing. So. Right. Well, congrats, Steve. We the look crown forward to seeing says more it all. from you. Yes. Yeah, the crown says it all. Okay, uh, save the date. We are going live with Laurels for Leaders. Gordon, since you're here, El Presidente, would you mind talking a little bit about what our Laurels event is gonna look like for 2021? Yeah, I can do that. Thank you very much. So uh, we're gonna go live on uh, February 23rd. We're gonna go from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in the afternoon to accommodate the after school uh, for the uh, um, ASB uh, presidents. And we're also going to offer what has traditionally been the early morning workshops that were done by U.S. Bank and Blanchard Institute. Those two have stepped up again, um, but we're going to be doing them between 3 and 5 p.m. on the Wednesday and Thursday prior to that, uh, February 17th and 18th. Um, so should, still should be exciting. For those of you that aren't on the board and or aware, our keynote speaker for the main event is going to be the ex- White House doctor, White House pre, uh, physician for three sitting presidents. That includes both Bushes and Clinton, hint, hint. Um, and if you look at the Laurels for Leaders website, you'll actually see a picture of her with President Clinton in the Oval Office, literally. Um, but um, 
she's going to give the uh, be the keynote speaker. And then we'll also have Adela De La Torre, uh, the president of San Diego State, uh, engaged as well. Um, and then I guess the last thing I'll comment on is there's a tremendous opportunity out there for you. And thank you for Karina for uh, putting it up there. This will be the opportunity to join as a charter member of the new Laurels for Leaders Society, where, as you can see for the dollar amounts right there, for just 250, you can sponsor an ASB president stipend that, as you know, we give to them live at the event, although this year we'll have to do that a little bit differently, um, and become a LEAF member all the way up to $1,000 where you're actually sponsoring a table equivalent of four ASP presidents and can be a crown member of the Laurel Society. Again, this is a unique opportunity to be a charter member of this whole new fundraising society that was uh, um, baked in the minds of Chuck Day and Brian Krause. So I'm going to give attribution to both of them for that. And I would encourage any and all of you to jump in. By the way, our president, Mike Boland, was the first one on the board to jump in on the board meeting on the chat room for a commitment to join the society. Thank you, Mike. Indeed, Gordon. Thank you. And anything and would... that's baked in Brian's mind is all about me. I'm, I'm into it. <laughs> I, I would just like to say too that the event is actually only going to be open to the ASB presidents and anyone that is a part of this Laurel Society. So if you actually want to join the event and hear the keynote and be a part of that live, um, then we recommend that you join the society and you'll get a ticket to that virtual event, which will be very entertaining. And, and you'll be able to hear the keynote this year for the first time in our last 12 years without having to listen to the clicking of the plates and the uh, knives and the forks as the Aztec shop partners try their best to keep it as quiet as possible. And of course, nobody will be subject to the potential fire alarm that we uh, experienced in honor of Chuck, which he did such an amazing job of recovering from a couple of years back. <laughs> that is right. All right. So now it's time for our favorite thing. Can you guess? the Kiwanis parent to this pepperoni. And I will put it out there that we have a lot of doodles in this club. So it's gonna be pretty tough to know who's is this. Does anyone have an idea? Can we zoom in on the dog tag a little bit? No, you cannot. <laughs> I think it, looks no like cheating. A, it looks like a Krause, but I can't quite tell. It is not Krause, it is not Judy. Do we have uh -huh. any other guesses? I don't think any Gary, who do you think it is? It's your president, Mike Boland. No, it's not. We, but that will definitely be revealed at some point in the Susan. future. Is it Susan's pooch? It's not Susan. It is, in fact, Gordon. Uh, and this is a picture of Gordon step. and his lovely lady clan. So congrats, okay. Gordon. I, we want to meet your little one at some point. So. And just, oh. just clarify, that would be Crosby Borner. Mr. Cockapoo, and who is about to become an honorary charter member of Laurel Society as soon as I get him to ink that check. Or <laughs> touch the contactless credit card on the donation on the webpage. Great. Thanks, Gordon. All right. Karina, thank you. I, you know what, Karina? I know you and I are both pressed for time as part of today. Judy has graciously offered to bring us home. So I just wanted to take a moment, say, I love everyone here, my fellow Kiwanians. Thank you for Gary, uh, for joining us and Jim. And um, I'm gonna pass it over to Judy, but thanks Karina for everything you do. See you, Mike. Karina, I'll throw 20 bucks into the uh, happy dollars if you put the Scripps Ranch Kiwanis Friday Night Magic show back up there for everybody. As many of you know, this is the newest club in the whole county of San Diego that we just uh, created. And uh, this is our real, our first fundraiser benefactors, no, no surprise there, Rady Children's Hospital. So would encourage you, even if you're not into a family uh, magic show at seven o'clock this Friday, feel free to register and know that that money's going to go to Children's Hospital. Sorry, Gordon, I got to get off, but thank you, everyone. See you guys. Okay, we're just going to do fines, and then we're going to wrap it up. So I'm going to follow your lead, Gordon, and I'm going to pledge $20 in fines. And I, I know Karina's off, but I did tell her. I have San Francisco behind me because my niece is getting married in a very intimate COVID-friendly ceremony. Um, her, her, her groom... 
her parents, his parents, and that's, I think that's about it. And I have to really thank um, Alexandra Prochewski because, you know, she gave me the confidence that such an event would be very nice. That's how she got married this year. And um, also Karina, because I gave my niece a virtual shower. We played games. We had a wonderful time on Zoom. We had 39 people at the shower. And it's really because I've seen Karina do this so much that I had just enough confidence to get it off the ground. And it worked out really well. So it's $20 of happy bucks for that. So anybody else has any happy bucks? Now's the time. I do. Um, $20 happy bucks for me. This is my first Kiwanis meeting in our new house. This has been like an 18 month process to find something and oh well, took a pandemic, but we're finally in our new house and we're getting it organized and we're very, very happy. Congratulations. Thank I'll have you. to tell my niece, so now she's in your footsteps. How does she have 20 bucks left over after buying a house? <laughs> Why it's only 20. Uh oh, okay. last 20. Because she put all on the Dodgers in the World Series, God. That's right. That is right. I'll put in five bucks for having to eat lunch at the beginning of the meeting and not letting anybody see my lovely face. Okay. And I've got yeah. 20 for the great club you guys have. It's enjoyable to see so many people joining in on Zoom. And um, Lauren, your uh, mask, your hats, and the activity, and Karina, the dynamic job she does with everything. It's 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 so easy to donate 20 bucks to the club. So congratulations and uh, good luck in the uh, 2021 year. Hey, thank you, Gary. We're, we're right, right there with you. And Love appreciate it. everything that you do. Uh, anyone else with a happy dollar? Hey, Judy. Hey, Doug. Uh, it's actually Chuck. I just wanted to say, uh, Chuck. yeah, I, I, I'm sad, but I, yeah, I'm not really that sad because Jim Flores has now gotten his second major award. On Saturday evening, he was recognized as the uh, fundraiser of the year by the Association of uh, Fundraising Professionals on a video event that uh, I think went very, very well. But that goes alongside his uh, recent uh, recognition as a nonprofit executive business and CEO of the year. So uh, we need to do something with him. I, I may have missed a meeting where you got him, but I, you know, Flores, he's just going to be insufferable of all this. But I'll throw 20 bucks in in his honor. Uh, but uh, congratulations to our friend. He did. He's done very, very well. Lauren has an idea on how to totally humiliate him. So uh, we'll, we'll let you know what it is. Perfect. <laughs> we were just talking about that. Okay, any, uh, thank you very much, Chuck. I have sun in my eyes and I saw the mustache and that's why Doug popped no, out no, of my no, mouth. Not the best, not the best. <laughs> okay, who's next? Well, we're, we're in that witching hour of it's two minutes after the hour. We pledged to try to start and end these meetings on time. So I want to follow the rules as I am so rule driven. And um, I want to thank Lauren, again, our guest, uh, Jim Woodford and Gary for being here and our presenters, uh, Natasha and Elaine from SDG&E, the really great information. And thank all you members for being here. I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving and um, don't forget to be on the Scripps Ranch Magic Show. And then we've got some great programs in December. And so uh, I can't, Thank you enough. 2020 was an amazing year. It's kind of, I feel really kind of great to be here towards the end of 2020, never realizing what kind of year we were going to have, but it's been amazing. And I just think all you Kiwanians have done a great job in, in keeping the spirit alive for this organization. And Gary, thanks for your leadership too, because it's been so helpful. So with that, I would like to adjourn our meeting. Uh, is there any objection? No okay. objection. And I did put the magic show link in the chat if you're interested. So everyone can have that as well and be able to register and take part. You know, Lauren, you. I'm having a hard time copying it from the chat. If you wouldn't mind emailing it to everybody who attended today as well, I'd appreciate it. I don't know if anybody else has tried to copy it, but I, I can't. 
So, um, Lauren, I'll, I'll, I'll double down on my 20 bucks and throw another 20 bucks in if you throw it out on an email to the whole downtown San Diego club, because I know that'll generate us another three or four registrants for the benefit of Children's Hospital. You said another $50 for that? I will do that, you sir. Thank you. <laughs> I think you said another 20. Oh, mm, all right, all right, well, I guess. I can hear him choking back here. But if, but if you agree to email all the clubs in the whole division every day between now and Thursday, I will make it 50. I'll make it 100 if you did that. Gary, you know can we get your help on that? Wow, okay, Gary, well. Can we get your help on that? Hold on, go ahead, Gary. Oh, uh, meeting you. Trishman says yes. This okay, is all right. Oh. Real Visit quick, it. yes, Gordon, I will do that. Uh, thankfully, Karina just created a division-wide uh, email <laughs> list, and uh, this will be the experiment. Now, if I miss a day, um, I guess I won't. <laughs> we want to we want to extract that the best we can from you. Yeah, I think, you know, we've been having this discussion as, as some of us have crossed into new Kiwanis clubs and have multiple memberships and realize they cross divisions. This is just a tremendous time to really unify the whole San Diego County divisions and stuff like yes. that. So much great stuff going on. So thank you for facilitating that. And we volunteer to be the experiment. <laughs> Very good. You will be. Um, Vic is raising his hand. Vic, are you there? Yeah, I'm here now. It's just in case somebody tried to talk to me earlier. Got it. Okay. Well, welcome and almost goodbye. But Vic, would you please. like to say anything, pay a fine, do a happy dollar? We're open. Uh, We're or so register, or register so for the Friday. I'm so ill prepared right now. <laughs> so okay. give, me a give me a pass today, okay? Okay, we'll let you get back to mediation. Uh, okay, yeah, thank okay. you so much. Okay. All right, okay, everybody. Here's to a great end of the year, a great Thanksgiving and just full speed ahead. And, you know, 2021, it's going to be a brand new year. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Judy. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Judy. Bye. Okay. Great. Thank you, Madam. Five. Lauren, thank you. Great job. I appreciate it. Carl, I think we're going to do the meeting on, on Friday. Hopefully I, don't know, I saw that. Okay, good. All right. All right. And See you good all. net report this month, by the way, Carl. Thank you. Say what? Good net report this month. Oh, thank you. Appreciated. I send it out because why not? <laughs> uh, I'm just living on your fame, sir. So I appreciate that. Very appreciated. There you go. Keep smiling, kiddo. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. Bye. See ya. Bye.